Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations, and today we are going to solve the age-old question, which is better, a gas truck or a diesel truck? Now, there are a lot of opinions about this, and there are a lot of different theories out there, but we're gonna drill down into what this truck does better than this truck. We've got two 2022 Super Duties behind me. The short bed has the 7.3 liter Godzilla gas engine in it, and this truck, the long bed, has a 6.7 liter turbo diesel in it. So stay tuned to learn everything you wanted to know about gas and diesel. Now at the risk of dating myself, there was a time in the 80s when gasoline powered vehicles, you'd get like a V8 Trans Am and it made 180 horsepower, which is terrible. Diesels weren't much better, but there was a gas crisis sort of at the end of the 70s, the beginning of 80s, so people were looking for the best possible mileage. At this time, that was diesel trucks. They were simple, they got great mileage, but they also didn't have good performance. They were kind of stinky. That's all behind us now. This truck here, I mean, it's not really much louder than that truck, and it can still tow a house, but it's not particularly simple, and it doesn't even get that much better mileage, as we'll see. So one of the first things that we want to note is that there is a price difference associated with gas and diesel. Now that includes the price of fuel itself. Where I live, it's about 15 cents more than regular unleaded. There's also a price difference when you're purchasing the truck. So the 7.3 liter Godzilla engine is about a $2,000 option over the base 6.2 liter gasoline engine. If you want the 6.7 diesel, that's over $10,000 over the base engine. My good friends Brad Davidson and Chris Sparks were nice enough to join me. Both of these trucks are pretty close to stock. Brad has the Tremor Edition that comes with a 35 inch tall tire. He's upgraded to Nitto's Terra Grappler G2s in the stock size. Chris went a little further with his. He at Rockhound makes control arms for these trucks. He's running that with a three and a half inch coil from Icon and their shocks. And that has allowed him to fit a 37 inch Nitto Recon Grappler on 17 inch method wheels. Why do I keep mentioning Nitto? This video is brought to you by Nitto Tires. We wanna thank them for this opportunity. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the Driving Line channel so you don't miss any of this content in the future. Hi, yeah, my name is Chris Sparks. I own Rockhound Off-Road. We do pretty much anything off-road related. Um, Specifically with the Super Duties, we make radius arms to help them drive better, right out of the box, bolt-on parts, one-off rock crawlers, anything that you need off-road related, that's what we do. So behind me is my 22 F250 with the 6.7 Power Stroke. So I don't tow a whole lot all the time, but um, we tow our crawlers everywhere. So usually about somewhere in the realm of uh, 10 to 12,000 pounds is what I tow. Previously, I had a 97 12 valve loved the truck it had a flatbed on it pretty bare bones and reliable but we ended up having to rebuild it again if you've owned a cummins or a 12 valve they leak constantly if they're not leaking you're out of oil rarely you have to change the oil you just have to continue to put it back in and uh, really you got to make sure you change the filter more than anything so truck was great but it had all kinds of maintenance all the time that i had to work on i wanted to get something that i could just hop in in the morning and drive and have a heater that doesn't take 20 minutes to heat up. I narrowed it down to the Super Duty. That's what I wanted. You know, I like the truck and the drivetrain and all that, but in trying to figure out what motor option was the next options. I wasn't gonna do the 6.2, but the 6.7 was what I was kind of leaning towards. I had a diesel, I liked the diesel, but the 7.3 was a super interesting option. And uh, I definitely like the idea of that, that motor. It's a big border, big block motor. Um, with good power and all that. But uh, I, the way I kind of usually do things, I like to, if I can, get the biggest that I can, that I can afford, that it, it, it makes sense for me. So getting the diesel, I knew it would pull anything and everything that I needed, um, way more than I was really gonna use, but I at least had it there. It was in reserve, able to be used. Whereas, uh, you know, even though the 7.3 is an amazing motor, I just felt like the diesel was gonna fit my needs and possible future needs a lot better. When I went to the Rubicon, it was like doing two wheeling trips because it was a, not just wheeling the Rubicon, but it was, you have to get there. Towing up there was a trip and stress all on its own. 
uh, you're watching your EGTs more than you're watching the road, just making sure everything's doing just fine, you're in the right gear, all of that stuff. Like I said, it did it and it did it great, but then you come to this. This is just, the biggest thing that you're worried about in this is if your seat heater is on or, your, or the AC is on and what temperature is at. You don't think about it. You know you have the load behind you, but uh, it's, it doesn't matter if there's a hill up, a hill down, braking's not a problem. 12 valve, braking is terrible. There are no brakes. Um, so this was a much better upgrade from the, the previous diesel I had. So this makes it very nice. Well, my name is Brad Davidson. I owned and operated B-Rads Customs in Sparks, Nevada. Uh, we specialized in all sorts of stuff. Our mantra was, whatever you want, we can build it. So when I started looking for trucks, my old truck was a 2004 Ford F450 uh, cabin chassis commercial truck. So I had that truck for about two years. And if uh, anyone out there uh, in uh, Middle Land has experienced the six liter blues, well, they happen. And they happened to me. As soon as I bought the truck, I had to have it bulletproofed. And it was really, really great for about a year. I decided that uh, I, I was done with that truck. So I started doing a little research. I heard about the 7.3 Godzilla. I am a huge 460 fan, a uh, big displacement, super simplistic you know, push rod, fuel injection, basic stuff, right? I decided to start going that route. So looked on Ford's website, saw how many years they had been producing it. Looking at the horsepower, I was more than happy with it. I have a 32 foot uh, travel trailer and I wanted something that had just enough power, but I wasn't pulling a house. And also I, I don't care if I can pull uh, our, our our local summits at 80 miles an hour and I can't feel it. I don't mind a commercial driver, so I take things nice and slow. So I didn't need to have that uh, first guy over the hill thing going on. I've owned and, and worked on every diesel that's out there. And I say every, and I mean every one of them. They all have issues. The maintenance, the expense of it, and freaking getting them fixed. A glow plug, a little thing that big can cost you like 500 bucks, easy. So why not you make it simpler, right? Eight injectors, some sensors, and you're good. The tone of this thing is so nice. You just get going, you don't feel the trailer bucking you truck is uh, big enough to control the load, which is super nice. And then getting up to speed, I mean the automatic, the 10 speed in this thing is amazing. Um, there's no lug, there's no looking for the right gear. It always just finds the right gear. And yeah, you pretty much just pay attention to your climate, how hot or cold you are, and look at the road. So yeah, stopping with this thing, that's one of the coolest things I like about the diesels, is they have the engine brake. So the exhaust brake, it, really slows you down without having to use much braking uh, at all. And then these trucks in general, both this and the gas truck have the same uh, size brakes really. So they both brake great, but uh, yeah, the engine brake, the exhaust brake is just so awesome to not have to worry about what kind of load is behind you, what it's gonna push you through. So, you know, when you hit those hills uh, up here in the summits, in the summit, you just uh, let the engine brake do everything and you just drive and uh, make sure you're not going too fast. So I've had a lot of different trucks that I towed with and that includes even like when I drove for commercial, uh, drove for the city of Reno like dump trucks and different stuff. So I, I kind of had a, a way that I wanted the vehicle to act. Um, for what I tow, and for what I do, recreation, um, business related, when we tow something, I'm usually under uh, 15,000 pounds. I would say that this truck for me comfortably, I wouldn't go much more than that. Um, it's got plenty of horsepower. It'll, you know, with the 10 speed, it's always on the money, right? It's always making its horsepower and the computer knows exactly what it wants. You put this thing on cruise control, it, it just does what it needs to do. 
I love the truck. It's lighter. Um, it's simpler. Uh, I don't have blow plugs and injectors and two fuel pumps and all this crazy stuff and turbos to worry about, right? It's just the skinny one on the right. You want to go faster? Put your foot in it. Um, you hear a lot of guys saying, you know, the diesels get, you know, tons more mileage. I will tell you this. I'm telling, and I do the numbers. I don't look at the the, the, the gauge. I actually will do the hard numbers when I go fill up. And no matter how many times I've done it, I might get 12 to 13 miles to the gallon towing with the diesel. This thing gets anywhere from nine to 11. So definitely a difference. But for me, is it that big of a difference? <laughs> so cool. that's the whole thing. So that's it for this episode on gas versus diesel. I wasn't sure who was gonna win, but it was clearly the... Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.